Hello and welcome to video number five in this series of videos I'm making which are a response to an open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson regarding the flat earth by D. Murphy 25. He asks 12 questions and in this video I'm going to deal with questions five and six because they're largely dealing with the same thing. Question five. Is the Earth very, very small, or is the Sun very, very near? Um, the Sun is very small compared to... Sorry, the Earth is very small compared to the Sun, and the Sun is very, very far away. Eratosthenes calculation of the Earth's circumference... I think he means Eratosthenes. ...dependent on the light from the Sun being parallel as it should be if the sun is 93 million miles away. And it is. But anyone can go out on a sunny day with broken cloud and see that the light that arrives on the Earth is not parallel. The light rays come down at angles, indicating that the sun is actually very close. Now, the official explanation is that the Earth's atmosphere refracts the sun's light. Who says that's the official explanation? And that's why the light comes down at diverging angles. Right. So this diagram here that shows something that doesn't happen, that no one says happens, is supposed to explain this. Right. This explains this. This diagram of the whole Earth explains light diverging at this scale. I mean, can you see a problem with this? On the scale of the Earth, that what you see in that diagram wouldn't even, on this scale anyway, it wouldn't even be big enough to show on this diagram. If the, if the Earth was actually bending the sun's rays like this, they would still be largely parallel on the scale of this image. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Trying to connect this to this is just ridiculous. Right, anyway, what this diagram shows, sorry, what this photograph shows is what are called crepuscular rays. I've already made a video about this in which I actually used this very photograph. Crepuscular rays are an optical illusion. <coughs> These rays are all parallel. Now, as explained in the video, there are two very simple reasons why this cannot possibly be showing you um, the light diverging in the way that it seems to be showing you here. The first is that you could see these anywhere. I live about 4,000 miles north of the equator and I've seen them and they give the impression that the sun is directly overhead, maybe a mile or two away, which is impossible because the sun is never directly overhead this far north. So they are an optical illusion. Also, they give you the impression that the angle of elevation in the sun could change from about 30 degrees to directly overhead in the space of a couple of miles or so, which again is completely ridiculous. If you were at a place where the sun was directly overhead, for a person who was 69 miles away, it would still only be one degree from the vertical. So. This clearly is showing you an optical illusion because it, it seems to be showing you that, that rays from the sun that are hitting the ground just maybe even less than a mile apart are at quite, are at quite an extreme angle to each other, which they're not. This is, just, this is just perspective. That's all it is. It's perspective. All these rays are parallel. As I said on the video I made, if you got people to sail out in boats to where all these places were sorry, to all these places where the rays are hitting the sea, they would all see the sun in exactly the same position, in the same direction and, in the, and at the same angle in the sky, indicating that all these rays are parallel. Um, even if they weren't, this would be a completely absurd way of explaining them, because they would still be parallel kind of on the scale of this anyway. And no one says that this is the explanation anyway. 
Right, anyway. Form must be wrong. And the other okay. would mean that the Ratasini's calculation was made with refracted light and therefore must be wrong. No, the light wasn't refracted, it was parallel. And the Earth must be much, much smaller. So which is it? It seems to me that if you still claim that Eratosthenes' calculations are correct, then the light cannot be refracted. But if the light is not refracted, then the sun is close. And if the sun is close, then for Eratosthenes to observe what he... Eratosthenes. Is, the Earth must necessarily be flat. Absolute nonsense. Um, what Eratosthenes discovered was that when he was about 500 miles away from where the sun is directly overhead, the sun was at an angle of 7 degrees from the vertical. Now, assuming a flat earth, that would place the sun at about 4,000 miles high. And if it's about 4,000 miles high... How could you possibly be seeing rays diverging in the way that this diet, this photograph seems to be suggesting? This is clearly an optical illusion. Whether you think the Earth is flat or you think it's a sphere, you would have to accept that this is an optical illusion. I mean, if the sun was 4,000 miles away and there, were, there was two rays hitting the sea, maybe about a mile apart, they would still be almost completely parallel. In fact, they'd be, at, I've just calculated, they'd be at an angle of about 0 0.01 degrees to each other. If two rays from the sun 4,000 miles away were hitting the sea a mile apart, they'd be at an angle of 0 0.01 degrees to each other, virtually parallel. So, these rays are parallel. This diagram is complete nonsense. What he says is here is nonsense. And this doesn't work anyway because the further away you are from where the sun is directly overhead when you try and do this measurement, you get a, you get a lower um, estimate for the height of the sun. It doesn't work. It doesn't give you a consistent height for the sun. And the reason for that is because the relationship between how far away you are and the angle that the sun is deviating from the vertical does not fit a flat earth. It fits a spherical earth. There is a simple linear relationship between how far away you are from where the sun is directly overhead and the angle that the sun deviates from the vertical at that location. That indicates that the earth is a sphere. In a similar vein, how does a convex lens make light diverge? It doesn't, and no one says it does. So that would act like... Well, again, he's brought this diagram back that no one ever says is a representation of anything that happens in reality. Um, so this is just complete nonsense. Now, <clears throat> he shows... Let me find it. It shows this image here, which he thinks shows that the sun's rays are coming from different angles. What you're seeing here is an airplane casting a shadow on clouds that are much lower than where it is, that's all. So its shadow looks bigger due to perspective. <clears throat> then he shows this diagram here, where the, um, the shadows from the clouds look like they're at different angles to each other. Well, again, it's just perspective. It's like that. These shadows are all parallel, but they look like they're at different angles to each other due to perspective. That's all it is. This is perspective, okay? This is perspective. And the other one he showed there, that's perspective. All the sun's rays are parallel and, like I said, the relationship between how far away you are from where the sun is directly overhead 
and the angle that the sun deviates from the vertical does not fit a flat earth. So Eratosthenes experiment does not give you a way of calculating the height of the sun above a flat earth because you can't get a consistent answer doing it that way because it depends on how far away you measure the angle of incidence of sunlight from where the sun is directly overhead. So this, this is just all complete and utter nonsense.